In the previous lecture, we saw that evolution can happen rapidly. We saw that such rapid evolutionary change can take place if there is a strong selection pressure, a strong need to adapt. We also saw that humans are an important cause for such selection pressure because we create such drastic changes in the environment. We called this HIREC, human-induced rapid evolutionary change. In this lecture, we will take a look into the future. By the mid-21st century, three-quarters of all humans will live in cities. More than half of the landmass of the planet is urbanized, and much of the rest covered by human-shaped farms, pasture and plantations. Altogether, a set of entirely new habitats, the likes of which the natural world has not seen before. So how will the ecosystems of the future look like if HIREC became the overwhelming evolutionary force in our world? Let's first take a look at blackbirds. Until the middle of the 19th century, blackbirds were reclusive forest birds. They were never seen in cities. But since 1850 or so, blackbirds began colonizing cities, first in Germany, then in other cities all over Europe. What happens then is that the city blackbirds began to evolve. They lost their tendency to migrate, their body shape changed, their breeding time shifted, and they began singing at a different pitch. This, for example, is the song of a forest blackbird. And this, the song of an urban blackbird. We know that some of these changes are genetic from looking at the bird's DNA. The same DNA studies also showed something even more remarkable. Namely, that the city blackbirds had not colonized cities by first evolving in one place and then leapfrogging from city to city. No, instead, each city blackbird population had evolved independently from the local forest population. Even in China, the Chinese blackbird, which is a different species, spawned an urban offshoot independently. So the urban blackbird is an example of parallel evolution. The same evolutionary changes taking place independently in different places or different times. Such parallel evolution is likely to happen in urban evolution. After all, unlike natural ecosystems, the city ecosystem is regulated by human interactions. And because of our long distance communication, the same habitat changes are taking place at the same time in different cities. Because of technology transfer, electric street lighting appeared in different cities in different countries more or less at the same time. Insects are attracted to light and often die in the process because the lamps give off too much heat or because they starve while sitting endlessly on or near the lamps. Florian Altermatt and Dieter Ebert from the University of Zurich studied Epinomuta cagnagella, the small ermine moth, in cities and countryside in France and Switzerland. They found that the city moths were genetically predisposed to avoiding light whereas the countryside moths were attracted to artificial light much more strongly. In both French and Swiss cities, the moths had adapted in parallel to the harmful effects of street lighting. So for the future, we may expect that urban ecosystems will dominate the planet, that human technology transfer will make that changes will happen simultaneously across the world, so-called telecoupling, and as cities expand, changes will, will happen more and more quickly. This means that only those species that can evolve fast enough to keep up with the changes will survive. In summary, in this lecture we've seen that future evolution will be dominated by human-influenced habitats, especially urban ecosystems. We've also seen that these habitats have unique features due to the fact that they are driven by human social interactions. They change fast and they are telecoupled. So animals and plants in the future will be constantly adapting to a dynamic human dominated environment. Whether they can actually do so depends on the organisms and on the changes in the ecosystem. Can you think of characteristics of organisms that will make them more evolvable? And can you think of evolutionary challenges in urban ecosystems that will be particularly easy or particularly hard to adapt to? 
In the next lecture, we will briefly look at how we can apply the kind of evolutionary thinking that we've trained in this MOOC to other fields in society, such as medicine.